Hi there, Joe Brophy, Cosmic Headquarters, Sunapee, New Hampshire, sparkling water mountain community in the upper valley of New Hampshire. My resume shows that I was in the Marines in the U.S. Army, and people ask me about that. They ask me how did I become an actuary and a few other things, and they're all interrelated when I look back at my childhood and see the things that interest me and the places I've been. But uh, as a young child, I was an altar boy and uh, served mass many times for Father Burns, Richard Burns, and he eventually became my confessor because I was interested at his encouragement to become a priest um, actually, uh, I got so involved with the books that he gave me, particularly uh, Thomas Merton's uh, Seven Story Mountain, that I got really interested in the Trappist. And of course, eventually I joined the Trappist. That's another story. But Father Burns, I would visit him usually on a weekly basis, and he'd give me books to read, and we'd talk about. Uh, my spiritual life, my aspirations, and uh, uh, and and it was good. He was a, he was a good guy, and he uh, he died young. He knew he was going to die young. He had some kind of disease that his father had, and he died. But in any event, he was a very powerful influence on my life, and uh, so I met with him frequently. And in our office. Uh, believe it or not, there was a big, big safe, twice the size of a big refrigerator, and the door was always cracked. It was a, it was a black safe and had a lot of fancy uh, pencil, stencil, I guess you call it, drawings on it. It's always cracked open. On top of the safe, there was a huge seal with a big handle on it, and uh, inside the safe there. Were or at least baptismal certificates. I don't know what else was in the safe. And his secretary would frequently uh, pop into the office and she'd say, Father, uh, bless me, poor soul, but I, I need to get at the baptismal certificates. I have a request here. And of course, she'd come in and pull a certificate and put it under a stamp and uh, put it in front of Father Burns. And he quickly completed um, the information she provided him in his penmanship, and uh, and away she went. So frequently, when I was discussing things with Father Burns, uh, he would be interrupted with a phone call, and he'd say, "Excuse me, I have to take this elsewhere," and off he went. And so I'd be sitting there, reading a book or staring at the ceiling, and. Uh, and eventually I started to think about the safe and the baptismal certificate. So I had this uh, plan that maybe I could swipe a few certificates and put the seal on them. Well, in any event, one day when he was off, he said, excuse me, I have to take this call. And I quickly moved into action, took one of the uh, pads, a whole pad actually, and I feverishly stamped. Uh, put the seal on the uh, the pads. I was doing probably 10 pages at a time. And um, when I completed that, I put the pad behind my back, under my belt, pulled my shirt down over it. And I began to perspire. I was nervous. And Burns came back, Father Burns, and we concluded our discussion. And I kind of backed out of his office so he couldn't get a look at my back. And off I went, and uh, I was delirious with uh, joy having pulled such a fantastic robbery. And uh, so in any event, here I am now. I, I have a whole pad of uh, baptismal certificates, and I began to complete some for myself and for my friends. I had very good penmanship. Uh, the nuns taught us the Palmer method. So you couldn't tell whether I was writing it or Father Burns was writing it or handwriting. I had to make sure I had a good pen with 
the right ink. And I used it very discriminately. I made out a few so that we could, um, myself and my pals, could drink at the Sunset Bar, which was on the corner of 106th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. Actually, between 106th Street and, um, and 109th Street, where I lived, I think there were six bars. So there was a lot of action there, particularly on Friday and Saturday nights, and we wanted to be part of the action. We'd show our birth certificates, and um, after a few times, they stopped asking for the certificates or proof of age because they recognized who we are. So having a lot of success with that birth certificate, I decided, and I don't know who prompted me, but I decided to join the Marines. Now, there was a reserve unit on 125th Street and Broadway on a ship that was anchored in the harbor called the Hudson River, actually. Called, we called it the USS Never Sail. I don't know if it's still there. I tried to look it up on Wikipedia and they had a little success. And uh, they had meetings there once a week for this reserve, Marine Corps Reserve unit. And we drill and I became a 60 millimeter um, operator. And I became very skilled at setting it up and eventually firing it. Uh, so we met weekly and uh, every month or two we went out and bivouac, go out for a weekend into the boonies and play war games. And once a year we went to um, away for a couple of weeks to Norfolk, Virginia, and to Camp Lejeune was another place we went to. At Norfolk, I particularly remember it, we practiced amphibious landings. So we climbed down the net with a 47 pound millimeter cannon on my back. And, uh, and after a while you got used to it, you practice it a few times. It's kind of scary because if you fall, you're dog meat. And um, so in any event, what happened uh, somewhere in June 19, 50, I'm going to say. In 48, by the way, I joined the Marine Corps. That's when I used my baptismal certificate to fake my age. And I think in June 1950, we were away in bivouac, and the um, Korean War broke out. And our unit got activated. So now I'm in the, I'm in the uh, regular Marines, the U.S. Marine Corps, <laughs> under, still underage, and... Um, uh, and I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of respect for the Marines. They're great people, uh, the leaders, as well as the soldiers who, who joined the Marine Corps. Then I guess the next thing I recall is that uh, I was still in high school. I hadn't completed high school, and uh, I'm in the uh, Marines now for the summer, and uh, September's approaching, and school is starting, and my pastor, Father Burns, decided it would be my best interest to uh, to get an honorable discharge from the Marine Corps, which happened. So I served almost three years in the reserve and also in the regular United States Marine Corps. And it was just a fantastic experience. And I went back to school. And the following June, I graduated from high school, high honors. I decided I'd like to join the Marine Corps again, and uh, they only had three-year enlistments, and the Army at the time had two-year enlistments, so I joined the Army, and because uh, I wanted to go overseas, I wanted to go to Korea, I wanted to play the bagpipes, leading a regimental force, and uh, all those sort of things were in play, and I ended up in Fort Dix, and they wanted me to be a chaplain's aide because Father Burns wrote to the chaplain there who he knew and said, uh, please uh, take on Joe Brophy as a, uh, a chaplain's aide. And I, I refused that and I went overseas. I did play as a regimental piper and a battalion piper. Well, I should probably add one other point. There's a lot more to the story, but I probably should add one more point. Father Burns uh, said, you know, if you don't uh, become a priest 
or a Trappist, and I actually joined the Trappist, as I mentioned earlier, I said, well, I really want to be an astronomer, and I want to get my doctorate in astronomy. I love cosmology. I've been at it since I was three years old. And uh, Burns said, no, I don't see you as a theoretical type. I see you as a problem solver. And he says, my buddy, and I wish I could think of his name, is the chief actuary at the Metropolitan Insurance Company. I'd like you to go down there and talk to him. And believe it or not, he says, you know, chief actuaries make $25,000 a year. And I said, well, that's a lot of my money. My father never made more than 5000 uh, riding the buses and supervising the buses. In any event, that thought stuck in my mind, and I'll pick up on that thought years later when I had a conversation with a, a friend in graduate school and made the decision, hey, maybe I should become an actuary. In any event, long story, I hope you're all doing well. Get a chance, come up and visit us on Lake Sunapee, a beautiful place to sail and swim and fish or ski Mount Sunapee Mountain, a wonderful place. Talk to you all later. I became a mortar man, 60 millimeter mortar man, and I was pretty good at, uh, in fact, outstanding and setting up a mortar in a few seconds. It takes a lot of practice.